Create in me a clean heart. That should be all of our cry to God to create in us a clean heart. Because unfortunately we don't stay that way. It's the World Cup final. And a man makes his way to his seat right next to the pitch. He sits down, noticing that the seat next to him is empty. He leans over and asks his neighbor if someone's going to be sitting there. No, says the neighbor. The seat is empty. That's incredible, says the man. Who in their right mind would have a seat like this for the final and not use it? The neighbor says, well, actually, the seat belongs to me. I was supposed to come with my wife, but she passed away. This is the first World Cup final. We haven't been together since we got married. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's terrible. But you, couldn't you find someone else, a friend, a relative, or even a neighbor to take her seat? And the man shakes his head. No, he says, they're all at the funeral. <laughs> My wife probably would tell me I shouldn't tell that one. But hey, I have the microphone, you know, I can tell it. First Thessalonians 2.13 says this, and we thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, I thank you today for the privilege of being entrusted to carry these morsels from your word to the family in this place. And I pray that you would direct the words to each heart and to each place where you want it to go. And that will have the effect that you want it to have in Jesus' name. Amen. So it says, not as a human word, not as a human word. Not from, in other words, the imagination of some false prophet or some shyster, but of God. The title today is The Authority of His Word. God is the ultimate authority in the life of the believer. And we take our marching orders from His Word. Him say, me do. Him say, no, me not do. Period. That takes care of it. Matthew 28, 16 to 20 says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. He told them, they went. When they saw him, they worshipped him. This is after the resurrection now, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the end of the age. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them, to go, that's backing up to verse 16. And this was after the resurrection. Jesus will soon leave the earth. It was important that the apostles obeyed his instructions and they went where they, he had told them to go. It's important that we obey his authority. Bet you never saw one of those, Mike. <laughs> Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active. This is what we are, the authority of his word. It's alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul, even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The Word of God 
is my all-sufficient rule for faith and practice. I'm saved because of what the Word tells me about myself, that I'm a sinner. And because of the Word tells me about Jesus, that He is my Savior. <laughs> the Word judges my thoughts. All I have to do is read it or listen to it. Matthew 28, 10. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And of course that happened. But back to Matthew 28 and verse 17. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. They saw him, but some doubted. Now these were the apostles, the very ones who had been with him during his ministry. And it says some doubted. The apostles could not have doubted. The 11 that were there, no, one's missing, you guys know why, because that was Judas. But some doubted. They had seen and been with him in Jerusalem after the resurrection. There must have been other people there that were the doubters. That's my opinion. Anyway, verse 18, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And, and, and going and, and baptizing happened on the day of Pentecost after the Holy Spirit fell onto the disciples that were in the upper room. And Peter, who was just a coarse fellow, went out and preached a sermon out in the street. And 3,000 people got saved because of what Peter preached. His sermon is recorded in the book of Acts. He used scriptures. The Holy Spirit anointed him to be a preacher right then. 3,000 people got saved and baptized. The words that Jesus commanded them to do happened on the day of Pentecost. In our society, there are different sources of authority. Mother's authority, because I'm the mom, that's why. Any of you ladies ever say that? Because I'm the mom, Wave, waving a rolling pin. Carol used a spoon, wooden spoon. Yeah, my mom used a fly swatter. Because <laughs> I'm the mom. You can see, uh, usually authority rests on some written word, written rules and regulations we refer to as laws. Laws are the ultimate guidelines for our behavior, what to do, what not to do. Sometimes we don't agree with the law. Sometimes the law is wrong. Sometimes we wish that there was a law governing something. There ought to be a law. We vote for candidates for office depending on what kind of laws they might pass. The Code of Hammurabi is the oldest written code of law known to exist 1,750 years before Christ. Every society has rules of behavior governing the way the members treat each other. Children first learn about the law in the form of rules. Don't do that, don't touch that, don't say that. <laughs> you guys, you probably heard that when you were a kid. Don't touch that, don't say that, don't do that, stay away from there. It was all for your own good. And then in your, in your turn, as a parent, you probably did that. Say, don't touch that, don't do that, don't say that, don't go there. My mother would come after me, as I said, with a fly swatter when I was disobedient, which was not half the time, I guess. She'd come after me, and if I could get to the door and run outside, she wouldn't come after me. But then I had to go back in sooner or later, and my dad would be home, and it was much worse than if I'd have just let her beat me with a fly swatter. Anyway, the Word of God is our authority. If we follow it, 
First of all, we will be guided if we follow the authority of the word. We will be guided. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. So the illumination of your feet is where you are now. Your feet is where you are. That's where you are. So it's a lamp for your feet and a light for your path. The path is where you're going, what's in front of you, what obstacles might be that are illuminated by the word. Sometimes we're in complete darkness. Have you ever been in such a dark place that you couldn't see your hand right here? Anybody? Ever been in a place that dark? Yeah, if they turned the lights off, you wouldn't know which way you were going. I spent a lot of time in dark rooms because I was a photographer, and you couldn't have any light in there when you're developing film. You have to handle the film in total darkness, otherwise you ruin the film. So I had to memorize the room before I, before I turned off the light so I'd know where the clock was, the timer, and where the developing tank and the, and the rinsing tank and the fixing tank, where everything was, I'd have to memorize that. And a couple of times, I'd, the, f the film fell on the floor. And that was a little bit of trouble. I had to get down there and feel around in the dark to find the film. Complete darkness. Complete darkness. If you get lost in the woods, even though there, there is a little bit of light, or even, all, even plenty of light, if you're lost, you don't know where you are, and you don't know which way you should go to get where you want to be. Ever been lost in the woods? I've been lost in the woods. I was hunting with my dad. I think I was about 12 or 13. I got lost in the woods. I didn't know which way to go. I got turned around in there. Finally found another hunter who told me exactly. He said, where, where, where are you hunting from? And my uncle had a camp. We never hunted with him, but he had a camp there. And he, he took me out in back of his, his, uh, his, the hunter's camp, and he said, just go right the way my arm is, and there's a hollow, and it, you drop down into that hollow, and you go down, downstream, and that'll take you right there. I had no clue. I had no clue. I was just turned around, and when I got down to where my dad was, he had a deer hanging up by the horns in a branch, and he had gutted it. And he wasn't lost because he didn't wander around as much as I did. But being lost can be hopeless. You get when you're lost in, in the dark, I'm talking about spiritually, it can be hopeless. You can wind up in despair from being hopeless. The world is in spiritual darkness. Only when someone steps into the holy light of salvation do they come out of spiritual darkness. Until salvation, we're blinded by the darkness of sin. The world comes up with one philosophy after another, trying to explain how people should relate to each other and how they should behave. Some of the thought systems are called religions. Some are called philosophies. But outside of Yahweh, Jehovah, our one true God, they are in darkness. Only through knowing Jesus can they emerge into the holy light of our loving God. <laughs> you guys are getting weaker on that. The dark authorities that exist outside of God like Marxism, for instance, would try to be an authority for the world. But they try to do that based on their own flawed notions outside of God. We need God's word to be our authority. Number two, we will be comforted. Philippians 4, 6 to 7, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. 
and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There are so many things that happen in this life that can cause grief. Loss of a job, loss of a home, loss of a loved one. When in grief and turmoil, you need comfort. You need peace. Some people seek peace in hollow philosophies. But the peace that comes from God's word is the ultimate peace, the peace that passes all understanding. Does your heart need to be guarded? Guard your hearts and minds, it says. The enemy would like to insert confusion into your understanding. The world is full of enticements. Yes, your heart needs to be guarded. And the guarding comes from the peace of God the assurance of which comes from his holy word. Talking about the authority of his word today. Number three, we will be taught, Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Doesn't that sound nice? It really does. The ultimate learning is learning from God. It says, learn from me. His word is forever settled in heaven. The people who were taught by Jesus and accepting his teachings were never the same again. The Sermon on the Mount had so many truths to live by, probably more than any other sermon or any other teaching. How should we live? How should we treat people? How should we treat those who would be our enemies? How should we treat people with whom we disagree? How should we treat people that are mean to us? The answers are in the authority of his word. It's hard to learn what you don't know. In other words, if you don't read or study, you can't learn. Listening to teachers and preachers is fine, but direct study in God's word is the best learning. Studying his word. Study, it says, to show yourself approved. Second Timothy 2, 14 and 19. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is no value and it only ruins those who listen. Verse 15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Correct handling of the word. Ultimately, in studying the word, we are trying to understand what the author happens to be God has said and not allow our own opinions or views to cloud the meaning of what he has written. When we're diligent to rightly divide the word of truth, we can understand what he has communicated in his word and be well equipped for what he would have us to do and how he would have us to think. And the word of truth, verse 16, avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Verse 17, their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them, he's naming them here, Hymenaeus and Philetus, Verse 18, who have departed from the truth, they say that the resurrection has already taken place and they destroy the faith of some. Nevertheless, verse 19, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away 
from wickedness. Our own wickedness is the enemy, is our own enemy. Our wickedness separates us from God. Wickedness and holiness cannot both exist in the same person. Let that say again. Wickedness and holiness cannot both exist in the same person. Number four, we accept the authority of God's word by his word. We will be challenged. Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Have you been, ever been weary and in danger of losing heart from things that are happening to you? This therefore refers back to chapter 11 where the author describes many heroes of the faith, Abraham, Noah, Moses, David, and others. He essentially says that remembering these witnesses helps us get rid of sin and run with endurance the race before us. Endurance means that to bear up under a heavy weight. Mike, when you were wrestling, what did you, what did you bench? Can't remember. Maybe more now than then. Now than then, what, what do you bench? Wow. Well, endurance means to bear up under a heavy weight. When we feel like giving up during terrible times in the church or in life in general, we must remember godly examples. We must remember how God allowed Joseph to suffer betrayal from his family, slavery and prison before God, before God exalted him to second in command over Egypt. We must remember how God allowed Job to suffer various tragedies, but how God's ultimate purpose was to bless him. First Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Number five, we will be saved by the authority of God's word. Through the authority of God's word, we can say, I know that I know that I know that I have a God in heaven. Though I have never seen him, I know him and believe in him and love him. Through the authority of his word, I believe that Jesus was God's son. Through the authority of God's word, I believe that Jesus is God. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. Through the authority of God's word, I know that I am a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through the authority of God's word, I believe that Jesus came to earth 2,000 years ago to suffer and die on the cruel cross of Calvary. Through the authority of God's word, I believe that Jesus by his death paid the penalty for my sins and yours too. Through the authority of God's word, I believe that Jesus is the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me, he said. Because of the authority of God's word, he said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Because of the authority of God's word, I know that there is no other way in to be in heaven after this life, 
Acts 4 and 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Because of the authority of God's word, I know that I've been set free from the law of sin and death. Because of the authority of God's word, I know that I have a place in heaven. Do you know that with me? God has invested his authority into his word. He invests his authority into his word. God reveals his will in his word. God reveals our flaws and weaknesses in his word. He reveals his desire for us in his word. God's authority for every part of our life is in his word. All we have to do is read it and do it. Be not only hearers of the word, be also doers of the word. I have to read it and do it. I read the whole Bible every year. I challenge you to do that. This, in, on January 1st, on New Year's Day, start. <laughs> I read what's called a one-year Bible. Every, every day there's a, there's a selection from the Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs. It follows all those right through to the end of the year. There's a date, there's a, and so by the end of the year, about 20 minutes a day, by the end of the year, you read the whole Bible. I read it three times before I really understood what was going on in the Old Testament. I'm a little dense, it's a little hard, <laughs> but, but I've been reading it now for I think 28 years. If you haven't read the whole Bible, that's a good way to do it. Get a one year Bible, get the biggest print one you can find. They have a little one, if you get that one, you won't read it because it's too hard staring at those little words. It's too hard. Get the biggest one and get the NIV version. That's what I recommend. And read it. And every day say, Lord, what, is, what are you showing me in your word today? Sometimes I don't understand. I put a question mark in the, in, the, in the margin because then I can look up some uh, commentaries and try to figure out what that means. But the Holy Spirit guides his word into your heart guides his word hide your word in my heart that i might not sin against you that i might not sin against you you can't hide it god will hide it god will put it down in your spirit and someday when you need that draw that morsel of word it'll be there it'll come to the surface really it will god's word is so good as what we base our whole life on it's just, it's just truly awesome and amazing. I think I have personally, I don't know how many people I've led to the Lord. I was doing it way before I was a preacher. I probably led more people before I was a preacher than since. I probably led more. To, because in church, most of the people are, are believers already. But his word is, there's nothing else like it. Amen. Would you stand? I'm going to let you go. It's only 11.42. The Baptists haven't been to the restaurant yet. Maybe they have. I don't know. I'm a little, I've been, I was a little short-winded today. <laughs> I prepared this sermon. Usually I want to get about eight pages. I only had five. And it was complete. And I tried to flesh that out some more. But it was complete, just the way it was. So that's why you're getting out of here a few minutes early. <laughs> Dear Lord, we thank you this morning for the precious people that have gathered here today. We're just so thankful, Lord, that, that, we, that we have a family here that, that loves you and that you love us, Lord. We thank you for, just for the opportunity just to gather together as you commanded us to do. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together was your was your command as the habit of some is we ask for safety of those who might be in the woods hunting bullets flying around lord we just ask you to keep them safe and to give them a happy victory and to bring it bring them back to us lord with a 
with a fuller house than we have today. But we pray that this message has been a blessing to the people here and the people who might see it or hear it on, uh, on our website, Lord. So just bless everybody as they go their own way and bring us all back safely next time we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.